Before we move on, I would like to show you a very, very simple numerical experiment, which I will be doing in MATLAB. And uh, I will be using the uh, filter back projection uh, in the way it's implemented in MATLAB. So that's not my implementation. And uh, I'm using the modified Chapel Logan Phantom, which we are already familiar with. So this is the one. I take the radon transform of that with some arbitrary parameters P and Q. So that's a parallel sampling. And I do the reconstruction using the reconstruction formula, which we just derived. And um, I use a relatively small omega to show you the effect that I want to demonstrate. And uh, so if I choose omega small, the first thing I have to do, of course, is choose an appropriate filter. And what we've derived was the filter for Ramlak. So um, that was the harsh cutoff filter. And this is something we can actually provide to iRadon. So that's the MATLAB implemented version of, um, of the uh, inverse radon transform, filter back projection. And the filter we want to use is Ramlak. So uh, yeah, that's the one we looked at, uh, and uh, that's the one that gives exact uh, results for um, for already uh, omega band limited functions. Uh, and the result is okay. I mean, the overall image quality isn't too good because uh, I chose omega relatively small. So only a small portion of the Fourier coefficient is actually recovered. Um, but there's an additional problem, which you see, and which we already uh, looked at uh, in a different setting. Uh, we have this ringing over here. So this ring uh, appears. And uh, so that's a typical effect if we use the, the Ramlak filter. And the image we are looking at is not actually omega band limited, which, of course, we cannot guarantee. OK, so uh, this is not too nice. So the question is, how do we get rid of the ringing? And um, I proposed to use the Chap Logan filter. By the way, the, the 0 0.2 of, uh, over here means that I'm using a smaller um, omega than I could. Actually, it's only a fifth of what would be supported by the image. So. Um, I'm using the Chapelogen filter. I think that's it. Yes, and you see, maybe you see that it's it become a little bit better. So the ringing is is not as well as bad as before. It's become a little bit better, but uh, still, of course, the ringing is definitely visible. And still, that's due to the fact that uh, we are cutting off in Fourier space, and so that uh, it's inevitable that we have these kinds of effects of the outer skull. Um, let me use still another one. So that's the cosine filter. Uh, I think you will guess what it does. It uh, goes from 1 to 0, like the cosine. Well, we, had, we, had, we have now three um, functions. The first one was simply taking the characteristic function, which was 1 on the image uh, on the interval from minus omega to omega and 0 everywhere else. Then we took the Cutoff co uh, sync function that was um, that was proposed by Shep and Logan, and now we're using the cosine, which is even a little bit better, as we can see. And yeah, if we use the cosine filter, then now we're slowly cutting off the uh, the uh, frequencies in Fourier space, and that means that we actually getting rid of the ringing. But uh, of course, the disadvantage is now that uh, the image is definitely not as crisp, uh, is not, um, has, doesn't have as much detail as we had before. And the reason is that uh, for, with uh, the Ramlak filter, we could recover all Fourier coefficients exactly up to some point then they were gone. That led to some ringing. But uh, now we give up Fourier transform uh, tr uh, values of the Fourier transform, which we could actually recover and just uh, 
just uh, let it smoothly uh, fall down to zero. So um, not all of them are exact. Um, now we get a very smooth image, so that's nice, but uh, also we are losing some detail. And when doing the implementation, one has to decide, do we want a crisp image? And we have the risk of ringing, so we have may have additional artifacts in the image, or do we have to want to have a smooth image and thereby losing the uh, maybe losing some of the details? And uh, usually, what is done these days is this decision is left to the doctor who is looking at the images, and uh, he has a knob where he can actually turn, which you can turn on or off, so uh, you can choose a reconstruction kernel and uh, that means you can choose between artifacts and uh, artifacts but with details and a very smooth image with a little bit less details and uh, you can even do that interactively and uh, well the doctors are definitely trained to do that so they really use that. Okay, so uh, you see that everything we looked at up to now makes absolutely sense. Maybe you thought uh, while well, using RAMLAT, we are more or less finished. There's no reason uh, to use an inexact filter. Well, there is, and it's really used in practice. Before we move on, I would like to show you something. Um, and uh, I'm reusing one of the slides that I already had. And you remember we had this band limited versions of uh, the Shep Logan Phantom. So we started out from the Shep Logan Phantom and uh, then we band limited the image and uh, we got something like this over here. Um, and that, of course, that looks very much like what I just showed you in the reconstruction. Now I do something with this image. Um, this is now, of course, a band limited image because uh, I have cut off all the Fourier coefficients beyond a certain point. So if I take the uh, the radon transform of that and then look at the Fourier transform of the radon transform, the two-dimensional um, um, Fourier transform of the radon transform, the following thing happens. First of all, uh, this is the band-limited version I'm looking at. And now I'm taking the radon transform, so that gives us the uh, two-dimensional image that we are already um, th that we're already familiar with. And now I take the two-dimensional centered Fourier transform of that radon transform. Okay, I could do that. And we find that it looks like this. And what we can take from this is obviously the Fourier transform of the radon transform of band-limited function is not spread all over the plane. But uh, it seems that this, uh, the Fourier transform, the radon transform, lies in a, in a geometric thing li like a wedge, right? It's, it looks um, like this. And um, so it seems that this is located in some compact function, k, uh, some compact set uh, k, which is roughly given by this over here. OK, so the Fourier transform of the radon transform is band limited in a way that uh, it's uh, free to, that uh, the Fourier the the radon transform of a uh, of excuse me the radon transform of a band limited function is uh, band limited again and uh, uh, the Fourier transform of it seems to lie in the some compact set K so it seems that we can use the uh, the sampling theorems which we proved for the radon transform, and uh, so discrete sampling of the radon transform may still enable us to determine the radon transform of a function exactly, provided that the Fourier that the uh, original image was band limited. Okay, and now that's exactly what we'll try to prove in the next section. We'll try to prove that the Fourier transform of the radon transform lies, the, the support of the Fourier transform of the radon transform lies in a compact set K. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do.